everyone and welcome to the Leonte 3 month skills training. Um, I am Alfred Bayo and I will be your instructor or you may call me your coach or tutor for the Revit Architecture 2020 course. So in this we will be looking at the broader overview of the Revit Architecture 2020 work interface. Here is just a brief outline on what we'll be looking at. We will be looking at the start screen of Revit Architecture. We will also be looking at the tabs and ribbon in Revit Architecture. We will also be looking at the property palette and the project browser. And then we'll also look at the shortcut keys and some other features on the Revit architecture work interface. So if you have the software, it's whether you double click on it, the desktop icon, or you right click, and then you click on open, that will open for you this very first workspace. So basically, this is what you would probably see for the very first time when you open your Revit architecture software. So to the top left corner here, you would have your models where you can open an already existing project or you can go ahead and create a new project. And then just below that, you have families. Families are like component extra attachments. You have furniture, you have fixtures, you have appliances and some other element or component that you kind of beautify your design with. So you may go ahead and open an existing family or you can create your own family with this new tab here. And then in this window, you would see some models, sample files that are already into the, into the software. And then some of the recent files that you'll be designing will be shown in this list. So you see here that we have project 001, project 002, and so these are projects I have done. And then you see some sample files here, architectural sample files. You have some sample files or structural project, and then you have some sample system files. So just below here, of course, I told you about families. So you can see you have this could be a sample architectural family, or you can have sample structural family, or you may have sample system family. So depending on what kind of family you're looking for, or what kind of extra appliance or fixtures you're looking for, then you may go ahead and just click and do your addition. So of course the architectural has to do with the building components, the structural has to do with some structural adaptations and so, Truck members and structural features, and then you have the sample system. You may have your electrical, plumbing, or heating system of your structure. So, all of these ones also may need some families, furniture, and appliances. So, to jump into the workspace by clicking on new projects here. So, I click and then would ask me for the kind of a template I am looking for. So what am I hoping to design? If I click on this drop down menu, I would have the opportunity to select whether I am intending to do an architectural design or structural or mechanical template. So I'll choose an architectural template. Of course, I am um, intending to do a project and not a template. So this project remains checked. So I click OK from here. Then it takes me to this workspace. So the Revit architecture workspace, of course, is similar to most of the other software you would come across, like the Microsoft Word or Microsoft packages. You will see that you have a series of tabs at the top of the window here. A series of tabs listed here. Then you have this large workspace here where you will do your modeling. And then on the left side here, you have some property palette. And then on the right side here, 
top right of your workspace you have your navigation tool so basically right on top of here you'll see some quick access tools these are tools that you use almost frequently so most of them are already found in these tabs but they are placed up here so that you can access them quickly so let's just jump into talking about the tabs so foremost you see here file on the file of course this is where you can interact your model with the external environment using some filing similar to your microsoft word so you see here we have the recent projects i have worked on they are in this list so I can go ahead and click on any one of them and open them. Or I can have a new project. So if I'm intending to start a new project, then I may click on this one. Or I can start a new family. Or I can do some conceptual mass where I do some free modeling and then I later convert it to whatever design element I want to convert it to. And then, of course, I can do a title block that would have the standard uh, representation or documentation of my design or my model. This standard title block, of course, will contain information about myself, the designer, my project, and then my client, and some other notes. And of course, it is in this title block you would also have detailing of your design or your model. Then you have some annotation symbols. Notation is basically like you do your detailing with dimensions and, and texting and so on and so forth, but you have options, I mean, symbols you may be using. And then for the open, you see you can open an array uh, or an existing file, an existing project that the project you had worked on before. You can open it and continue modifying it or you can open a family or you can open a Revit file from whatever source or you have some building component that you can also open and then some IFC and some other file formats here you can open and then save of course would we'll save this present model in the Revit architecture format file format or you can go to save as that would give you the opportunity to select the new file directory and the format in which you intend to save your current model. And then export, of course, will take this present model that is shown in the workspace in different file format and export it to the external. So you can export your model in the card format, the DWG, DXF, or DGN file format. Or you can also export the DWF format. These are all different file formats you can export depending on uh, the region or the, the, the purpose of your export that will determine which file format you will export. And then also you see here uh, print, of course, similar to what you can do with your Microsoft Word. You just go ahead and print whatever is shown here on the workspace. So you can do some basic print setup. Most importantly, for this file tab, you have these options here. This one takes you to basic settings of the software where you can actually customize what the software does. So unlike other design software, you see that Revit architecture does not have any kind of automatic save um, function incorporated into it. So what it does is that it reminds you after every uh, time interval, uh, reset time interval, it reminds you to save your model. So you set the timing from here. Say after every 30 minutes of design, the software reminds you to save your the model and then you can actually customize your user your username presently of course this is 
alfred by you will be assigning and so on and then you also have some journal files and you have more um working updates you can also set from here so you can also customize your user interface the tabs that would appear here you can check and check any one of them depending on your your convenience or what you would really want you can customize them from this particular uh, window and of course you can set your graphics options so the background color you can set it to whatever color you want from here and then you see that these are checked by default this is actually the functions that will determine the appearance of your model you see here smooth lines and so on and so forth you can set so the hardware of your machine or your your pc of course you can see the video card and so on and so forth from here so the default file location for the, the software of course you can also select from here and modify them appropriately and of course you see the default file path for user files so rendering also you can go ahead and just do some modifications here depending on what you want and then spelling checkers and so on steering wheel modification the steering wheel is this tool shown right here so you can customize exactly how it looks like so the view cube also the view cube will be shown depending on what you want you can of course go ahead and customize this of course you'll see exactly how these ones work in subsequent tutorials so we'll just go ahead and close this so we are looking now at the different tabs that are available in revit so you see here the architectural tab and since we are doing this course simultaneously with the chief architect software in our previous class on chief architect i showed you that these toolbars here are just summaries of the, the tabs the different tabs so unlike chief architect in revit these tools here are not summaries of all the tabs they are just child tools that are under the tab you've clicked on from this list of tabs here so you see that if i click on this architectural tab the tools here that are shown on the architectural tab are totally different from when i click on the structure tab for the structure tab you see that the tools here also are totally different from the tools that are under the architectural tab so it is under this architectural tab that you can actually do your your your, your building design your modeling and then under the structure tab you actually do some basic structural component designs okay you do basic connections of course you see that you can do your beams your walls columns and so on under the structure and then you can do some connections you can do foundations these are all structural components of your design you can do some reinforcement design of course now your your different reinforcement component or fiber sheet and so on and so forth will be placed in your model and then you can actually choose from different components and models and you can do some openings and you can do some basic grid structural grids structural grids here you can actually do under these structures and of course under this architecture you see that you can build whatever component that is needed to bring up your your model or your design you see you can do it under this build so this is similar to the build tab in chief architect so when you click on build tab in chief architect you see that you would find walls doors windows and some other components but unlike chief architect now in addition to the basic build components you can see in chief architect in this revit architecture you can see columns and so on and so forth so here we can also do some lesion and then cutting systems ceilings floors and roofs of course we can design under this build so all of these are building elements 
okay and then the circulation or that will call some accessibility component so this actually enables you to move around your structure your stairs your ramps and railings you can design then you have some modeling here you can model your text your lines and you can then you can do your grouping of different components so we have rooms and areas how you specify rooms and revit architecture so you can go ahead and create your room and then you give it a name and so and then you can create opening in this design element so for example you can create openings in walls you can create some shafts vertical openings and then you can create dormers on your on your roof so you can also do some 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 data if you are in elevation level i mean if you're in elevation view you can create your different levels in your elevation view and then you can create grid grid lines these grid lines will be later used by your structural tab to bring up your different structural components for example your your beams position your columns and so and then you have your work plane you see that most times when designing your, your structure you may not be only working in the horizontal and the vertical planes some building designs require you to work in planes that are other than the horizontal and vertical planes so you can go ahead and customize or set your own work plane effectively so we've just talked about this structure tab the things you can do on a structure tab so let's go ahead and look at steel of course we can do steel designs you can do your connections in steel you can do fabrication element designs so we can do your modifiers and so on and so forth and then you see systems the walls and design elements actually gives you the architectural model but when it comes to the functionality of your model or your your, your architectural design you have to do some heating and ventilation and air conditioning system the hvac system so you see the different components you can incorporate in the heating ventilation and air conditioning system you have ducts and you have ducts placeholders and so on and so forth flexible ducts different kinds of ducts okay you have air terminals you can do under your heating and ventilation system mm -hmm. Then you can also do your fabrication, basic fabrication path and so Then you have your mechanical equipment and component you can place in your design. You have the P and ID modeler here. Then you have some basic piping and plumbing systems you can do. So you see we have pipes here, five placeholders, parallel pipes. You have some valves here, the elbows and so on and so forth. So you see some plumbing fixture, you have your toilet seats are here, and the sprinkler and so on and so forth. Okay. So you can do your electrical design, you can do your models. And you see also in here we can do some work planes. So on the insert, this is where you can bring something from the external environment into your model or into the private architecture work environment you can you can link a revit file from the outside or you can link an ifc file from the external environment or you can have a card file maybe you have designed a floor plan in autocad and then you want to bring it in revit architecture in that card format you can leave that card file so you can also link your you can also link your your topo your topography so maybe you've done some contour tracing in your google earth using your civil 3d that you bring up your contours and so you can link up those files into your revit architecture work environment to work with them effectively so you do some dwf modeling they share and so on and so forth so you have a list a variety of file formats you can actually insert into the Revit architecture work environment 
but most importantly you can import a pdf or image format into your revit architecture we'll make effective use of these two file formats as time goes by then annotation is basically where you do your detailing so this is where you position your dimensions accurately on your different design elements in your design so you can do dimensioning here both linear and angular dimensioning you can do or align dimensioning you can also do some radial and diameter dimensioning here arc length and so on and so forth so we can do some call out on spot elevation point spot so we can add some detail lines and regions and components on the detail in here then we can add some basic text and so and then we can do some tagging okay so to analyze actually it's like you 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 are kind of testing how your your structure would react to different working conditions so you see that we can do some analytical model in here you do some boundary conditions that is you set your conditions under which your your structure will work in and then you apply some some loads that is different kinds of loads you apply for your structure and then you do your load combinations and then you can do your see on the, the analytical tools here of course you can do your adjustments and then you do your reset and so and then you space and zones you can create different spaces and zones and then you can of course all of this stuff is just about doing your 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 analysis on your model stress and how the building reacts to different loads maybe live loads dead loads so you get point loads or udls uniformly distributed loads so your massing and sites this is where you do your topographic design so you you you, you actually design the, the, the landscape so you can do your conceptual mass from here and then you can mold it also by by face and you see you can design your topo surface from this particular tab and then you can collaborate chief revit architecture is actually one of the many tools you use to achieve the beam so you would want to kind of link up with other tools or other beam modelers in the beam environment so this is where you collaborate with different beam modelers on a very big beam platform so you can customize your views of course you can customize your graphics appearance and so you see here you can do your basic presentations render gallery your render in cloud so you can view 3d here different forms of 3d you can do sectioning and call out you can do your elevation views so and then on the manage you can do some basic settings in this here you can do settings for your units here you see you can set units from this particular window here then you can do your project locations and so on the manage then add ins or plugins this is where you actually uh plug in other other software into the revit architecture work environment for example, you can plug in your your V-Ray, which is a render engine. You can plug it into Revit Architecture Work Environment, and you allow the, the, the V-Ray to do all the the rendering for, for for Revit Architecture. And then the Modify tab is actually one of the most useful tabs in Revit Architecture. It is attached to almost all of the other tabs. So basically, when you do your modeling of any component, you have to go ahead and then modify it to exactly what you want. So you can do modifications by geometry. You can do some copying and pasting in the clipboard. 
we can actually modify with this general modification tools here that are almost taken from AutoCAD. And then you can do some basic creation, measurements here, and dimensioning. And then you can do some views. On the left window here, we have what we call the property tab or the property palette tool palette. Any design element or any tool you activate here, any design element you activate here, intending to use it, you will see all its properties stated here in this property tool palette. So, for instance, if I click on wall here, intending to use wall, you will see all the properties about this wall in this tool palette. So, I can go ahead and edit whatever that is editable about this particular component I have just selected. And then on the bottom here, you see that you can use these tools to actually customize your view. This is a detail level. You, and then this is the view style. You can view realistic hidden wireframe or different views of your structure and then you have some of these other clouds. So up here you have your quick access tools. All of these quick access tools of course will explore what we're doing in subsequent tutorials. And then your workspace here by default it shows you four callouts on each level. So this is the very first level, level zero, where you start doing the design. And as you add more levels, then you see exactly how this value here changes depending on the level you are in or in the property tool palette you can see here on the floor plans we are on level zero that is in bold we have level one then we have a site we have ceiling planes and so on and so forth all listed in the property tool palette so you see on this top right corner here we have our navigation tool so your wheel there is used to do various uh, navigation so you see we can do some zooming orbiting panning and so on and so forth using this particular navigation navigation tool we can see your your wheel so in next tutorial, we will look at um, how we can start using some of these uh, tools. Thank you.